In order to use Scratch 2.0, head to scratch.mit.edu. You can try it out by clicking the Try It Out button. Note, if you don't register for an account, you won't be able to save your work. The registration process doesn't take very long and can be done by clicking here or here. After you've registered and logged in, your screen will look something like this. To enter the Scratch Editor, click the Create button in the top left corner. Once you're in the editor, you'll see a couple different areas of the screen. The top left of the screen is Scratch's stage area. This area is where you will see your sprites act out the scripts that you give them. At the top, you can give your project an explicit title. To the left of this is a button you can click to make your project run full screen. You can use the escape key on your keyboard to exit this view. To the right of the name are a green flag and a stop sign. The green flag will run the scripts in your project, whereas the stop sign will stop them all. Note at the bottom of the stage there are X and Y coordinates. Scratch runs on the Cartesian plane, which makes it practical for mathematics projects. In the middle of the screen, we have the block palette. Think of this as your block library containing all the blocks that are available for you to code with. The blocks are split up into a variety of different categories. Motion blocks are used by sprites to move around the stage. Looks blocks change the appearance of your sprite or stage. Sound blocks allow your sprites or the stage to make sounds. Pen blocks let you draw on the stage as if it were a canvas. Data blocks function as variables for storing information in your program. Event blocks help your program determine when it should run certain scripts. Control blocks change the flow of your code. Sensing blocks make your code dynamic by taking input from the user or detecting specified interactions with other sprites. Operator blocks are used to evaluate logical or mathematical relationships throughout your code. More blocks are used to make your own functions or groups of blocks for your code. The script area is where your code will go. You drag blocks from the block palette here. At any time, you can right-click on a block or also drag it back to the block palette to delete it. Blocks can be combined here with other blocks to create scripts, and multiple scripts can create a project. The Sprites panel on the bottom left of the screen shows all the sprites you have in your project. You can click on the eye in the top left of the sprite to view its info. It is a good practice to give your sprites explicit names. You can also view what coordinates on the Cartesian plane your sprite is currently at. These coordinates are also visible in the top right of the screen when you click on any sprite. The backpack section on the bottom of the screen is like the clipboard on your computer. You can drag sections of code, sprites, and any other items here and take them to other projects. Let's start using the editor. First I'll give my project a name. I'm going to call it Dance Party. When I click on a sprite, it becomes the active sprite. As I'm clicking on the Scratch Cat, it becomes my current sprite. I can drag a move block onto the workspace. When I click on the block, my cat moves 10 steps to the right as that is the direction it is currently facing. I can change the number of steps and the cat will move that many steps on the grid. I can also change the 100 to a negative 100 and the cat will move in the other direction. If I want to return the cat to the center, I can use a go to block to return to the center again by double clicking on it. Let's try to get the cat to do a little dance. 
I can drag another block out and attach it to the previous one. Notice when I click on the blocks, it appears that the cat is not moving. Actually, it's moving really quickly. Let's go to the control blocks and add a weight block between the two move blocks. That looks a lot better. Then let's move to the left again before moving to the center. We can also right click on a block of code to duplicate it. The blocks that are beneath the block I right click on will also be duplicated. Now the cat will move 100 steps to the right, wait for a second, 100 steps to the left, wait for a second, 100 more steps to the left, wait for a second, then move 100 steps to the right and wait one more second. At the end of this dance routine, let's get the cat to meow and say something. If we click on the sounds tab at the top, we can see that the Scratch Cat by default has a meow sound already on it, so we don't need to import a sound here. Regularly, in order for a sprite to use a sound block, you first need to import the sound into the sprite. Let's click back to the Sprites tab. Next, let's go to the sound blocks. We have two options, play sound or play sound until done. One will start the sound playing, while the other will not let the code proceed until the sound is done playing. Let's use the play sound block here. Next, go to the looks blocks. Here, choose say hello for two seconds and have your cat say something different. Lastly, under the control blocks tab, choose a repeat block and put it around all our dance code. Let's get this block of code to repeat five times. Clicking on the block of code to execute it may work for one block of code, but we're shortly going to add another code block, so let's give our code an event to start it. When we go to the events blocks, the very first one is when green flag clicked. When we drag this onto our code, the code will be executed when the project is started with the green flag. Now let's animate our cat a bit. When we click on the Costumes tab, we can see that the Scratch Cat, by default, has two costumes. Clicking between them gives a preview of what we can do with them. Going back to the Scripts tab, grab a new When Green Flag Clicked event. Next, under the Control tab, grab a Forever Loop. Whatever I put in here will run forever. Under the Looks tab, grab a Next Costume block. Now when we run the program, the cat starts running really fast. While this is somewhat novel, let's add a weight block in there so the cat doesn't look as spastic. Again, these are found under the Control tab. I'm going to get the weight block to wait for 0.2 seconds. Next, notice how the cat keeps moving after the dance and the green flag is still lit. Our forever block is still running. Under control, there's a stop all block. This block will stop all scripts currently running. This can be dragged underneath our cat's dance script. Since this block is outside the repeat block, it will be executed after the repeat block is completed five times. Now what happens is the cat will do its dance, and when the script is ran five times, the stop all block will activate, stopping all scripts, including the costume change script. Well, now our cat is looking pretty good. Let's make our white background slightly more interesting. Click on the stage button on the bottom left of the screen. Don't worry, our scripts didn't disappear. They're just on the cat sprite. The stage and other sprites have their own scripts. There are four options for creating a new stage. Choose Backdrop from Library, Paint a New Backdrop, Upload a Backdrop from a File, or Create a New Backdrop from a Webcam. Painting a New Backdrop will open an editor similar to Paint.
Notice that when the stage is selected, instead of a Costumes tab, there's a Backdrops tab. Let's delete this new backdrop we've created for now and use a backdrop from the library. Select the Spotlight Stage backdrop from the library. We can drag the cat down a little bit on the stage. Returning to the stage, our dance party needs some music. Going to the Sound tab, click Choose Sound from Library. Here select something that appeals to you, or alternatively, on the previous screen you can click Upload Sound from File. Click the Scripts tab and let's set this sound clip up to play. We want the sound to start at the beginning of our project, so go to the Events tab and choose a When Green Flag Clicked event. Next, under the Control tab, grab a Forever Loop. Lastly, under the Sound tab, grab a Play Sound Until Done block. Make sure your sound is selected from the drop-down list. Now click the green flag to see our dance party in action. I encourage you to customize this file by drawing your own sprites in the editor or changing up the dance script.